Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. We had some problems with the words, but the words aren't the issue. Amen. Praise comes from the heart. Hallelujah. So without any distraction, you know, about the screen, let's worship. Praise God. Let's worship him. Amen.
there's no one like you. Thank you. You do miracles so great. <laughs> you do miracles so great. We worship you. We thank you. Thank you for your work in our lives. Thank you you're with us every moment of the day. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You're always there. And we bless you. Thank you for your angelic hosts that minister on our behalf. Hallelujah. The ministering spirits, flames of fire, the Bible says. Minister on our behalf. They're assigned to watch over us. They're assigned for our purpose, for our destiny, to aid, to help, to be there, to fulfill our destinies, our dreams in God, the to-do list of our lives. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Your angelic host, hallelujah. We bless you. It's you who deserve all glory. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just reach out again and thank him for everything he's done in your lives. Hallelujah. Everything he's doing. Thank him. Thank him. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you. Oh, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're so grateful. Full of praise. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done and all you're doing and all that is yet to come. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Um, tell your neighbor and say, I'm thankful. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. Awesome. Praise God. I just feel um, that was an, an education for some of us, some of you this morning, because I believe God's taken us to higher places in praise and worship. He's taken us to higher places. And there was, you know, just... The little discrepancy with the words there, um, there was a change and I didn't load the song and uh, poor, poor Caleb, uh, but uh, in the praise, in the praise of worship, thank you Caleb, in the praise of worship, um, God wants us to do it without distraction, you know, he does and that's why you want everything to go right. You want everything to go right. And if you see the great worship leaders, um, you know, Terry McCallum and Benny Hen and Catherine Kuhlman, I mean, the worship, the worship in their meetings, they wanted everything just right. Because everything else takes away from the attention of the master, you know, our attention on the master. So uh, get ready. Get ready in here when we just soar, amen, in worship and God takes us to new places and new heights where all you're seeing and experiencing is him, amen? Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team, for pushing in, amen, pushing into that place. Awesome. Awesome. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have some announcements for us, Crystal? Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome, Crystal. Praise the Lord. We don't even need words. Like all those worship leaders didn't even use words. Um, so what have we got this week? Tuesday night we've got women. So here at 7 p.m. we're going to have a good time. Tony's giving me a heads up what we're going to be doing that night. And it's exciting. It's good fun. Um, it's good crack. So definitely if you're a woman, make sure you're there at 7 p.m. at the church. If you're a lady. Um, prayer, Dad, did you decide... 
what you wanted to do with that? How, how, I mean, I am torn. Like, I never want to continue like the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't, I don't know. Is anybody else there? To <laughs> praise God. Well, we've got, we've got it on Thursday night anyway. <laughs> Prayer on Thursday. Um, if there's any changes, I'll let you know. But it's taken me a little, just a little, it's just, it's something that's there. Um, but it still needs to be proven. And I, have, I just, I'm just not quite there yet. But uh, how many of you enjoyed this last week? Prayer and fasting, absolutely awesome. You know, God moving, wonderful ways, and uh, amazing things were said. But we'll, we'll leave the prayer for the moment. Praise God. Thursday's on, unless otherwise instructed. Amen. Okay, so Thursday, 7 to 8 yeah. at church. Be there at prayer. Did you, all, did you all pray and fast this week? Any ones I didn't see, I just believed that you were all prayer and fasting. So well done, guys, for getting through the week of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is always great. If you want to continue praying and fasting, I encourage you to do so. Don't beat Jesus on the 40 days. But if you feel to continue praying and fasting, this is the time to do it. It's a great way to start the year. So I'll see you all out of prayer. I don't think there's any other announcements. Church is carrying on as usual. We are pumping out strong in Kingdom Harvest every Sunday morning at 11. So never doubt that we're going to be on. We are definitely on. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. Um, we had uh, we had the global church network um, meeting of pastors here on Friday morning, and uh, yeah, it's you know it's a dilemma for some churches. Some have stayed away, um, and you know they aren't going to meetings. But but we heard from Pastor Brian Madden some amazing some amazing news. I I knew the news in my spirit in my heart, but uh, it was amazing that it came out when the four main church leaders or the denominational leaders met with the government. I believe that was, was that Thursday? Uh, Thursday morning. You know, on, on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, I, I, I just felt pray, pray, you know, bind the devil. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says we have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. And uh, on that meeting that morning, the question was asked of the government, do you have the legal authority, the right to close the churches? And they said, well, we don't want to, you know, do that. We want it to be, you know, voluntary. And they were asked again, do you have the legal right to close the churches? Well, you know, you know, this is a, you know, and, and they avoided the question again. The third time they were asked, point blank, do you have the legal right authority to close the churches? The answer was no. The answer was no. They don't. They don't. And, and as I've said before, you know, wars have been fought and won, you know, for our freedoms, for our liberties. And, uh, you know, the reason we haven't had martial law and lockdown, you know, in this nation before and in times past is because we fought wars to avoid that. <laughs> Amen. Oppression, you know, by the government and uh, and things like that. So, you know, there are inalienable, inalienable rights, you know, that have come from all of that. And there's Magna Carta and there's there's other uh, rights and, and that we have in law. And uh Praise God. It, I mean, it goes the same way with, um, say, the, uh, the, the schools. Um, you've got, like, the academies and you've got the, um, the other ones, grammar schools. The grammar schools. There was a lot of talk in the media and other places, you know, that, oh, these grammar schools, they should scrap the 11 plus. They should be made to scrap the 11 plus. They should, you know, be told what to do. Guess what? They could not be told what to do because they have legal standing. They have legal standing. There's, there's a right, you know, to have um, the grammar schools uh, and that system up and running in the, in, so that it is autonomous, you know, where the government cannot just step in and tell them what to do. Because the schools, uh, if you go into that, the schools actually used to belong to the churches. <laughs> And uh, they got into some cooperative partnership with the government where, you know, the government now feels it, you know, 
runs everything where uh, no that's why it was legally it was it was legally um, it was a legal requirement for there to be um, some kind of representation of the gospel you know or the Bible and things like that in the assemblies uh, in the assemblies in schools in public schools even um, Bangor Academy because of this relationship you know and this agreement that the churches had with government when they uh, left the government in to, to kind of, uh, you know, help out running the schools and all that kind of thing. Uh, Mr. Heinemann of Bangor Academy said it's, it's in law. It's a requirement that schools actually um, have something religious, you know, in, their, um, in their, their assembly times. So, uh, yeah, Christian ministries are supposed to have a representation on the boards of the schools. Christian ministers, I think there's two places on the boards of the schools for Christians, uh, ministries and things like that to, to be on the board. And I'm told, I'm told by someone who's a headmaster that a lot of those places aren't filled because the ministers aren't stepping up. Nobody's volunteering. Nobody is going and doing that. But that is such a crucial responsibility. That's why Pastor Karen is a board member. She's a parent governor. So, you know, she's a parent governor of uh, Bangor Academy. And uh, again, responsibility because you're involved in helping to, to hire and, and uh, set, you know, certain agendas and, and things in place in the school. And it's, it's great to have that Christian voice, that Christian influence in there as well. Praise the Lord. So, um, yeah, that, that's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. So people said, you know, oh, I heard all churches are closed. No, the big four or whatever, if you want to call them that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But... Uh, you know, they decided that they, they aren't, and uh, they aren't going to have services, but we are. Yes. Okay, we are. The church doesn't take holidays. We're here for the community. Amen. We're here for the people out there. How many of you have ever, ever heard of care cabs? Yes. Care cabs? Uh, I happen to meet, as far as I know, if I've got everything right, I met Eddie, the head of care cabs, uh, the other night. Just divine appointment. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And uh, I just felt to pull over. There's a big sign up, you know, and these signs they have on trailers and they pull them around, uh, set them up in fields, Northern Ireland, you know, roadsides and all that advertising. Uh, but it just happened to be Eddie standing there because the sign was care cabs and uh, collision accidents uh, repair. Um, and uh, anyway, I got talking to him and I told him, you know, we're a church and uh, I was asking him how much it costs to advertise and theirs was a private board, but... Uh, he got to asking me, he says, do you guys do anything for suicide, you know, suicide awareness, depression? And, and I said, you know, yeah, the churches have to stay open because you can't help people who are suicidal or depressed or, you know, drug addicts with a Zoom call. You know, Zoom calls just don't cut it. <laughs> you know, I, I said to the police one time, you try doing your job with a Zoom call. You know, it doesn't work. You know, <laughs> nurses and doctors do that with a Zoom call. It doesn't work. So, um, you know, when you're working with people and he said, well, do you have anybody that would train, you know, like our drivers to, to, uh, you know, give them a, a more of an awareness of what to look out for, you know? And I said, well, we can get something like that. You know, I said, uh, if we're told of anyone in need, we'll go visit as well. You know, we'll send someone out. But I said, uh, I said, if you're going to tell us that, you know, you're going to be our eyes and ears, like eyes and ears of the church where, you know, um, because he said they're seeing it, you know, they're seeing people in distress. And, and if you're saying you're going to be the eyes and ears, then I said, we'll get a network up and going. You know, we'll get something going where we can, can get people to, to be on call, you know, if they see something. Because he talked about people jumping off of bridges and everything. And, you know, they're out all times of the night and they can be driving by and see somebody standing on the bridge, you know, by themselves doing nothing. I mean, it's like <laughs> little warning bells are going off, you know, little sirens and stuff. And uh, it's, it's not a joke because the suicide rates, you know, in, in Belfast, North Belfast, have been phenomenal. It's, it's crazy. It, it's shocking, you know, that that is going on. So, um, no, we want to be here. There's no, one, no reason ever for someone to take their life. N not when you're talking about the love of Jesus. <laughs> the love of God. Oh, the compassion of the Lord, you know, for every single person. And our heart beats with that compassion, you know, to tell them how much the Lord loves them, how wonderful 
he is and what a great plan he's got for every life. You know, God created every person with divine purpose and destiny and giftings. So, yeah, we want to be able to reach out. So that, that's powerful. Amen? That is powerful. So if you're, you want to be involved in something like that, you know, then let us know. Yes, uh, there, there can be training on that as well because, you know, there can be people on drugs and, you know, just near overdose situations. Sometimes emergency services have to be called. I mean, my goodness, I saw someone out here the other day and, yeah, they were calling the ambulance and uh, it was at nighttime. Guy, he was completely gone out of it. You know, he's walking in front of cars, everything, and, and just... You know, he, he was like a, in a fantasy land, you know, with, with no uh, bearing on reality. And, uh, yeah, so I was, I was there and, and offering help, but there was also a guy that was staying with them and had just called the ambulance and was speaking to them, and, and they were coming out. So, uh, but, wow, you know, I was praying for him and trying to help, but he was gone, you know, except for... Uh, Except for the intervention of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God. You know, people have to be woken out of that. So, praise God. It, yep. <laughs> I've seen things like that. So, um, hallelujah. Yeah, we're vital. Amen. Say we're vital. We are essential. <laughs> Amen. I also heard from uh, Pastor Brian Madden that, uh, and, and by the way, that information about the government admitting that uh, they don't have power to close the churches. That came directly from the junior minister, Gordon Lyons, to uh, Pastor Brian Madden. So that's, that's a certainty, okay? That's a certainty. Um, so, uh, and uh, I heard also, uh, Pastor Ryan went to uh, the police. He had meetings with the, the top police about street preaching. And uh, so um, they wanted to know, you know, uh, what he was preaching and... Uh, you know, he wanted to inquire also about, you know, is it legal and all this kind of stuff. And, and they have confirmed it's all, it's illegal. It's all legal, even during lockdown. Even during lockdown, preaching on the street is essential. <laughs> it's essential. Is that not awesome? That's not, I mean, that is wonderful. You know, and he, uh, I've asked Pastor Brian to come and speak for us this month sometime. So we're going to have him in here. Uh, but he wears a camera, he, he tells everybody, use a, a GoPro, you know, if you're preaching, film everything, because he said, he's seen it all, you know, there's uh, been accusations that can be made against you about what you're doing, but if it's on camera, you know, it's all there. Um, and uh, also, if people, there are people, he said about, he said about 10% of the people that he encounters uh, would, would cause a bit of trouble, okay? And he's seen it all, he's been spit on, and you know, he... he I've heard uh, people have had coffee thrown on them and all kinds of stuff. But um, the police wanted to see his video, and they said, you've got 16 counts of assault against you here. Even kicking your equipment bing, <laughs> is assault. And uh, so he, they said, um, will you give us permission you know, to, to prosecute? You know, we, we can prosecute. And he says, no, not going to do it. <laughs> not going to do it. Uh, and they said, why, why not, you know, and he said, no, it's, it's not about that, you know, it's not trying to get people prosecuted, uh, it's, it's about trying to get people saved, amen, we try to get people to come to Jesus, amen, so we can put up with a bit, <laughs> amen, and uh, hallelujah, so uh, that's really, really good, and uh, there, there was just some, some more wonderful news, just God's, God's just giving favor, favor and i'll just i'll just say uh you know that what is being shared even even west belfast things like that god is giving favor 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 supernatural favor where they're saying you're preaching the gospel you're preaching you know that it's not church that saves you that it's jesus that saves you well then come on come on isn't that wonderful hallelujah from <laughs> so that's that's powerful praise god well i'm i'm just delighted amen uh as we said last week we're rising uh god doesn't take holidays you know he he, he doesn't take time off the bible says he neither sleeps nor slumbers <laughs> amen so he's always working always reaching out praise the lord so 
Glory to God. We're going to uh, go ahead and take up the offering and bless the Lord with our giving. Amen. And I uh, just want to encourage you, uh, when you're giving, you're supporting everything that's here. Everything that's here. Everything that's happening. Amen. You've got fruit in that. Praise the Lord. Um, the kitchen, uh, I've asked an electrician to come back to me um, on a certain price. And I said, if you can, hello, if you can agree on that price, uh, then praise the Lord. Um, if you can agree on that price, then go ahead. I, I've given them the go ahead. Um, so praise the Lord. Hopefully we'll have all that resolved soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people, Father, who, who aren't shying away, Father, who aren't backing off, Lord, who are continuing to give into your kingdom, Father God, into uh, kingdom harvest, into the work here. God, we thank you. This is your work. Hallelujah. You called us. You ordained us. Lord, you gave us this building. You gave us the name. You, you told us when to start. Everything. Lord, everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, this is your work. Yeah. Lord, we're, we're your people. Amen. We're doing your will in East Belfast, God, reaching out. Hallelujah. Reaching out. And we just, we thank you for that. We give you all the praise, Lord. And this is seed sown. It goes into the ground. It's multiplied. God, there's blessing that comes back on every wave. Father God, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you, your people, we are blessed. Yeah. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say it again. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Yes, you are. Amen. Yes, you are. Praise God. Um, Jackie, where are you? Uh, yeah. come, come here. Hallelujah. Um, you guys were out on Saturday and, um, and, and Wendy. Wendy, come on. And C.S. Lewis Square. There. Praise God. And you guys were getting some good responses. Amen. Yes, yes. How many of you would like to join them out there on a Saturday? Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, we're ordering a Bose speaker, an 800-watt Bose speaker as well. Praise God. Wendy's got a small voice. We need to uh, ramp her up a bit here. Hallelujah. <laughs> You've been on the other side. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but uh, yeah, we're going to get a good speaker and uh, maybe get music out there as well. Amen. Does, does music minister to people? Yeah. Hallelujah, that's awesome. Just share a bit about what you guys experienced. Amen. Oh. Well, we just, <laughs> we went out together, uh, sorry, we went out together and we just took the wee leaflets at the back and just approached people saying that we were from Kingdom Harvest Church and, you know, did anybody need prayer, you know, and, and the Lord was so good because he really opened people to be, res to be, um, responsive was not we prayed we prayed you know that people would be open and be responsive and and everybody was except for maybe one person wasn't it really just one <laughs> one person <laughs> and that was it we, you know, we just said yeah 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 <laughs> he said he was an agnostic or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just said you know that is for sure it doesn't matter <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> it just doesn't matter anyway it was so good and you know the lord just just he did. He get. He get his favor with people, and and we were able to speak um, and just say about the church, and just you know, people give, really open for prayer. Yeah, they, they were open for prayer too. You know, even if they didn't want to be us to stand with them, they asked us to pray for others, yeah. and we got to pray with the agenda man who who knew the Lord, and and you know, he had a problem with his eyes and in cataract, and, and, and so on, and, and he was waiting on an appointment for the hospital, and so we were able, you know, we were able to. Pray for him, which was brilliant. So, the mic there when you Yeah, there was a lady. Um, she brought up with a Catholic background yes. and everything, and she was very open. She asked for prayer for her son who has uh, diabetes and that. Yeah, and there was another guy, Rosie, a civil servant as well, mm -hmm. and um, just yeah, just letting them know that we're still open, we're still here, and um, 
Yeah, and, and that's right. It was another couple. They went to a church in Mount Pottinger, but they were looking um, for a church for their friend's son, who was 21 and was looking th their church is <coughs> an, an elderly congregation. And uh, they were looking for somewhere a 21 year old could go to. So um, that she was very interested in, in yeah. talking about the church and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, it was a good day. Um, as Jackie said, we spoke that morning and we prayed. And, you know, um, we just wanted to go and. You know, you can be busy about your own business at the weekends, but we just wanted to go and, and do God's business. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thanks for being faithful. And uh, <coughs> hallelujah. Um, yeah, more of us need to be out there. Amen. More, more, because you just, you never know what God will do, and you know, unless you're out there doing it. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh Let's just go ahead and get ready for the word here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It was unusual today, um, you know, just, just preparing and things like that. Um, I didn't necessarily just feel to do the, the normal kind of thing. Um, and yet I feel to, to talk on faith, praise God, talk on faith. And again, you know, Jesus said when he was talking about coming back, he says, when the Son of Man returns, you know, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? And, and this, this is an issue because... Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people, they've been taught faith all their lives and yet seem to be struggling now, you know, and you're not supposed to be struggling now. <laughs> Amen. You're not supposed to be struggling. And uh, God's word is very clear. And sometimes we just have to review the basics, review the basics. You know, and uh, if you're learning to drive a car or something like that, I mean, you review the basics. You know, even if you've driven, you know, for a long time, there, there are times you go back for a refresher course, you know. Um, in uh, pilot training, they will send you back for refresher courses on, on the basics, you know, on the basics. And uh, if you're in sports and you're training, you, you can't neglect the basics. I mean, there are, there are exercises and things that you do uh, that you're going to be doing the rest of your life, you know, if you're, if you're in sports and things like that. And uh, I praise the Lord. So, you know, it's the same with uh, Christianity, our Christianity, our walk with God. Um, I knew a guy, he, he read uh, How to Hear the Voice of God, the book by Kenneth E. Hagan. He said he read it once a month just to keep him aligned <laughs> with hearing God's voice, you know, that, that he didn't get off and, and distracted. Praise God again, you know, uh, back to the basics. So look at Hebrews and chapter 11 and verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And to understand this verse, you need to know a few definitions there. You know, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things hoped for. So biblical hope, it, it's very clear. Um, Biblical hope is a confident expectation of something that's in the future. It's a confident expectation of something that's in the future. You know, you, you've got it in your mind, your mind's eye. You've got it in your imagination. Uh, you know uh, about, you know, this, this future event or, or this, this, this future uh, happening. Um, and and you're, you're just, you see it. And it's defined within you, but it's in the future. And, and you have a confident expectation of good things to come. You know, you, you're looking forward to it. Praise God. But it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance of things hoped for. In other words, uh, one, one translation said faith is the title deed. It's the title deed. It's the substance. It's, it's not just something that you're looking forward to in the future. It's not just in your future. Faith brings it into the now. It brings it into the now. It's, it's substance now 
on the inside of you. It's a title deed. You know, um, there's ownership. You've got this thing. It belongs to you. There's ownership. There's a title deed. If you're buying a car or a motorcycle, you know, or an airplane, hallelujah. Uh, you have registration. You have registration papers. They change the registration, don't they? You know, and the title deed. And then it's put in your name. And your name is on the title deed. Praise God. Uh, if you're buying property or a house, that's your house. You know, the title deed is the evidence that it belongs to you, that you have it. Hallelujah. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance, the title deed. It belongs to you. The Amplified says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact that which cannot be revealed to the senses. So, you know, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, the King James and the second part of that, the evidence of things not seen. So it's the substance, it's a title deed, it's the evidence, praise God. Uh, you, you know that you have it. It's the proof of things and the conviction of their reality within you. You know you have it, praise God. How many of you know that you're saved? Amen? Amen. The Bible says, you know, by faith we are saved. Okay, Ephesians 2, 6 through 8. You know, it says, by faith you are saved, not, not by works, lest any man should boast, but by faith, you know, we are saved. So um, the Bible talks about he that believes on the Lord, you know, shall be saved. He that believes on the Lord, he that calls on the Lord shall be saved. So uh, you have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and say with your mouth that he is Lord. So you've got evidence within you. Um, First Peter 2 talks about or sorry, 1 John chapter uh, 2, believe it, or chapter 3 there, uh, it talks about, you know, he that believes that Jesus is the Christ has the witness in himself. Again, the witness, the evidence, the proof, the conviction on the inside that, that you've got it. You've got it. And the Holy Spirit works with you in that. You know that it's yours. Amen. You know that you're a child of God. Uh, again, Romans 8 talks about the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the child of children of God bears witness, produces inward evidence. So faith is the inward evidence. It's the title deed that you have something. Praise God. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and indwells you. Amen. You become born again. You become a new creation. You are a child of God. You have a brand new spirit on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And all the benefits of the kingdom of God come with that. Amen. All the benefits, all the blessings, all the promises of God, everything Jesus went to the cross for. Praise God. That includes healing, you know, deliverance, safety, preservation. Praise God. Anything that God's done for anyone else. All the realms of answered prayer, anything he's done for anyone else, he will do for you. Hallelujah. But in all of that, you need that conviction on the inside, you know, that all of that belongs to you. You need that inward evidence. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen automatically. It's yours. Everything in the kingdom of God belongs to you. You know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will come and he will reveal to us. He will show us you know, all things, and, and he will reveal what belongs to us, you know, in the kingdom. We, we could go into scriptures there. But um, hallelujah, we have to, to know inwardly that those things belong to us. So um, how, how does that happen? You know, there are other uh, scriptures here like Romans 10 and verse 9. Okay, Romans 10 and verse 9. It says, if you acknowledge, or the, that's the Amplified, but if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. 
And then it says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you're believing and you're confessing. This is how you are saved. For, with the, for the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew nor Greek. The same Lord is Lord over all and rich to all who call upon him. Okay, For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How then shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? So it's saying you have to hear. You know, to, in order to believe, you have to hear. You have to hear it first. Praise God. So it says those who are saved, how can they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear unless there be a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. I mean, that's, that's what's being done on the streets of Belfast, on the streets you know, of Northern Ireland and cities and towns all over the place. Uh, when Pastor Brian Madden went before the hierarchy, you know, the chief constable and, and, or different ones and, and the police there, they asked him, they said, where are you people coming from? <laughs> where are you people coming from? They said, this is happening all over Northern Ireland. People are preaching on the street. Where, who, like, who initiated this? Where did this come from? Who initiated it? The Lord. Amen? <laughs> the Lord. Because we're nearing the time of his return. And so, you know, this is for the people of Northern Ireland. How shall they believe unless, there's, unless they hear? How shall they hear unless there's a preacher? You know, uh, how will there be a preacher unless they be sent? And it says here, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. That's the gospel. That's what we want to preach in Belfast. That's what we want to preach, you know, in C.S. Lewis Square. Hallelujah. You know, in Corn Market and everywhere else. Praise the Lord. And it says, but they have not all obeyed the voice of the gospel. Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? And we're getting here to verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing. You've got to hear something. And your hearing comes by the word of God, meaning God opens your spiritual ears. With the word of God, he opens your ears. You know, um, Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, everyone had ears on their head, but their, their spirits, many of them were just closed. They weren't listening to the voice of the Lord. They weren't listening out of their spirit. But when you hear the word of God, the Bible says the word of God is spirit and it's life. It's spiritual. It's powerful. Praise God. So again... You know, you, you've got to think about what you're listening to, what you're filling your life with. Hallelujah. Because um, faith comes by hearing. So whatever you're listening to, that's, that's what you're putting in. That's what's going inside you. Whatever you're filling your life with. If you're filling your life with the word of God, then you're laying up the word in your spirit. You're laying up the word in your heart. You know, the Bible says when, um, when Anna and Simeon came and prophesied over Jesus, you know, it says that Mary laid up all these things in her heart. You know, she's the one that said when the angel appeared to her, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. So what's she doing? She's laying up the word in her spirit, in her heart all the time. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do. And I know that this seems like basics, but there are people who have forsaken the basics. They're listening to everything but the word. Uh, they're putting God's word on the same level as the news media report or something like that. You know, well, I know the Bible says this, but the news media says that. Hold on a minute. When did those two ever compare? <laughs> when did God's word ever get lowered to the point where, you know, the, uh, the news media or something or, or, or some chiefs chief scientist or medical officer or chief surgeon or whatever, you know, when did their word supersede God's word? 
no way, no way, hallelujah, never, ever, 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 praise God. And uh, so, you know, we, we have to absolutely um, listen and be aware of what is, is going inside, what is going inside of our spirits, into our hearts, what are we, what are we laying up in our hearts, Just spelling this right here, so I got it. Okay, so praise God. Look in, um, look in Mark uh, chapter four, verse um, thirty-one. You know, in, in Mark chapter four, it talks about the sower sows the word. We haven't talked about this in a long time. Okay, um, so if we just go backwards there in, in Mark four, it says in verse two, then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and, uh, from the air and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. And when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root, and it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up and increased and produced, some thirty, some sixty, some a hundredfold. So he said then to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So again, he's talking about the spiritual ears. So when he was alone, the disciples came, the twelve, about him and asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins should be forgiven. And he said, do you not understand this parable? How then shall you understand all parables? The sower sows the word. So he's talking about the sower is sowing the word of God, the word of God in our hearts and in our spirits. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. And this is what's going on all around us, all around us. You know, when it says here, when tribulation or persecution comes, tribulation is trouble, Persecution, it means like to pursue, you know, when something seems to be pursuing you and just giving you a hard time, you know, uh, and again, tribulation is trouble. So when tribulation and trouble come, people discard the word. They cast aside the word. They aren't standing on the word anymore. They aren't listening to the word of God that says, by his stripes, you were healed. <laughs> you were healed 2000 years ago. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You know, uh, King David, Psalm 103, he, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 91, you know, talks about you won't be afraid. The Lord is your, your refuge, refuge, your fortress, <clears throat> your God, and in him you will trust. It talks about, you know, he gives his angels charge of you. You won't be afraid of the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that walks in darkness, the destruction that wastes at noonday. It talks about no evil shall befall thee, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah. You know, all these are wonderful, wonderful promises. And you, you have to go and lay up these promises in your heart so it's not just superficial. It's, it's not just on the surface. It's not just on the surface. It's not just what's in your head. It's what's in your heart. You know, people think just because they have a scripture in their head, they think it's down here. It's, it's not the same. <laughs> That's why, you know, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Lord told Joshua, meditate on the word of God. 
Don't let it depart from before your eyes or out of your mouth. He's saying, keep it before your eyes day and night. Meditate on it day and night. He said, don't let it leave, you know, your, your, your mouth either. You know, speak it, praise God. Uh, because when you meditate on it, that word meditate, it's like, I heard one person say, it's like the cow chewing the cud. You know, that's like an old Western United States uh, way of describing it, you know, that the cow chews the grass like over and over and over and regurgitates and chews again and, you know, uh, that's the milk that we drink. Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Turns into milk. <clears throat> but uh, meditation, you're meditating over and over. It's going from here to here. You're meditating on it over and over. The more you hear, the more you meditate on it. Roll it over and over. Roll it over and over between your spirit and your mind. Your spirit, your heart, and your mind. Your, your mind, your will, your emotions, your soul. So the Bible talks about we're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. So you've got to let that word roll around in your soul and in your spirit. And the more you do that, the more it gets into your spirit, the deeper your roots go the deeper your roots go and faith rises. Faith is what rises. When you sow that seed of that word of God in your spirit, <clears throat> then the, the faith of God rises. All of a sudden you realize you've got faith. <laughs> in other words, you're not afraid anymore. You know the Lord is your keeper. You know the Lord is the one who is with you, who provides for you, who, who watches over you. Hey, amen. So like the Lord said, don't take any thought. You know, your heavenly father knows what you have need of. You know, don't have any fear, any worry about your life, what you shall eat or drink or anything else. <clears throat> Praise God. If anyone's unemployed, hallelujah. He's a provider. Amen. He, he will get you a job. <laughs> God, God agrees with work and all of that. Uh, but he will look after you. Amen. And we can trust in him. Praise God. No matter what the need is. What the prayer is, it doesn't matter. The Lord can provide it. Hallelujah. So um, just continuing on here, verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among thorns, and they're the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. This is incredible. Again, we see this happening, you know, where the cares of this world, people are burdened down, way down. You know, this is what they talk about. They talk about the burdens. They talk about the care, the fear, the anxiety, you know, uh, about all that's happening in the, wor the world. And it says that this can grow up like thorns and choke the word, choke the word, because you're giving more heed to the trouble and the persecution and and the cares and the fear and the anxiety and the worry, you know, and the de even desire for other things. Those are other types of deception, you know, where you're just pursuing, well, I want the big life. I want the high life. You know, I met someone one time, tremendous, tremendous gifting. I believe they were called of God to, you know, to sing in the church and uh, sing for the Lord and everything else. But I tell you, they had their minds and their eyes set on corporate business jets and marrying millionaires and everything else. I mean, they, they were just, they weren't here at all. You know, you, you want them to serve in the church and help out. And, and uh, <clears throat> no, it didn't last any time because the seatfulness of riches desire for other things. God wants you blessed, but he said, put my kingdom first. Put the kingdom first. Put me first. The Lord wants him, you know, himself. As long as you keep him first, he's happy. <laughs> He's happy. You know, praise God. Whatever you have, you can give it away at the drop of a hat if he told you to. I mean, we live that way. That is, that is not a question with us. Um, and the Lord is first. And so, but we can't let these other things entering in. And all of a sudden you feel you can't do the will of God because, you know, you're pursuing a career or you're pursuing, you know, a raise. And, you know, you're, you're, you want the ability to have more finance or whatever. So it becomes unfruitful. And these are the ones sown on good ground. Say good ground. good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And also he said to them, it's, um, well, that's another parable. Stop there. So, but uh, these are the ones sown on good ground again. Hear the word, accept it, embrace it, receive it. 
and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So um, that's up to you how much fruit you bear with what God gives you, amen? And, and what you glean from the word of God, what you lay up in your heart. Hallelujah. So, amen. The Lord didn't have any problems there. He said, some of it's going to be 30, some 60, some 100. Amen. He rejoiced in all of it. <laughs> amen. That was the good ground, the good ground in our hearts. So, so what, what do you do, you know, with the word of God that's preached to you every Sunday? Do you just hear and forget it? Because <laughs> that's what they did back on the stony ground. Didn't have any earth, didn't have any roots. They just heard it and forgot it. I listened to what I preached last Sunday again, last night. I was blessed. <laughs> I was blessed. No, it's, it spoke to me again. And people who preach know that, you know, because it's the Lord who who helps and enables. And, uh, you know, I can listen to myself preach and get blessed. I can listen to other preachers and get blessed. Amen. But when you hear the word again, it goes deeper. Amen. You're listening. You're 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 rolling it around in your spirit and in your heart. It's going deeper. It's getting stronger on the inside of you. It is the time to arise. Amen. We looked at Joshua and Caleb, and we looked at Gideon and and Jonathan, and we looked at David, and you know they all arose. It is the time to arise. Amen. Praise God. But we cannot uh, forget. Uh, the basics, again, just laying up the word of God in your heart, in your spirit, bearing fruit with it. Praise God. Play it in your house. You know, play the Bible. The Bible's on audio now. You know, you can get audio Bibles and you can play them on your mobile phone. Um, uh, Pastor Karen and Daniel are starting to go through the scripture, go through the Bible by listening and also reading uh, the Bible. Praise God. So, uh, and they even have the Bibles now, you know, an audio where you can increase the speed a little bit. Don't increase it too much, okay? <laughs> but you can get the person talking a little faster and you're listening. And if you want to go over something, then you can pause, you know, listen again and think about it, you know. And uh, with Daniel, we pause it and, you know, he'll ask questions and things like that. So, um, praise God. Um, this is what you do. Just constantly lay up the word in your spirit. And, and that builds your faith. Amen? That builds your faith. Glory to God. So um, just on faith again, Mark chapter 4, verse 31. Verse 31, it says this. It says, faith, okay, is like a mustard seed, or the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. When it is sown into the ground, it's smaller than all seeds on the earth. Okay? But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may rest under its shade. And with many such parables, he spoke to them as they were able to hear it. Hallelujah. Um, and again, the mustard seed is compared uh, to, to the kingdom of God um, and also it's compared to um, faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in, in Luke chapter 17 and verse 6, it says this. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up from the roots and be planted in the sea and it will obey you. Praise God. If you have that, that faith as a grain of mustard seed. Uh, also, it talks about if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, that it's, it's like a mountain. Hallelujah. So in uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, I can move mountains. It says, Jesus said to them, because of, sorry. <clears throat> there was a young boy who uh, was epileptic and a demon spirit kept throwing him into the fire or throwing him into the water and he kept going through fits. His father brought him to the disciples. Uh, the disciples couldn't cast him out and Jesus was annoyed over that. <laughs> You won't see Jesus annoyed very much, but he was annoyed at that because the, uh, the man, the father came to Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's an epileptic, suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And then, 
answered Jesus and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. <laughs> so he's like, I taught you disciples how to do all this, and you're not getting results here. And uh, Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came privately and said to him, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. So the opposite of faith is unbelief, right? Uh, For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll be able to say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. That's powerful. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Is that not powerful? Yes. Nothing will be impossible for you. You know, God's plan is that we, we are saved by faith, you know, that we live by faith, we walk by faith. Praise God. The Bible says the righteous live by faith. Um, you know, it says, uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, because so we please God by faith. But here it's saying that you can have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you'll say to this mountain again, remove from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. God wants us to have faith, mountain-moving faith. Mountain-moving faith. And I, I read in like five different places where Jesus talked to different people, different ones, You know, like the woman with the issue of blood, you know, when she came and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and she was made perfectly whole, uh, Jesus said to her, daughter, you know, be of good comfort. You know, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Like, go in peace. You know, and uh, and Jesus made that statement like five, six times uh, to different ones talking about your faith has made you whole. Blind Bartimaeus. He, to blind Bartimaeus, when blind Bartimaeus called out, cried out, you know, Jesus stopped and called him. What do you want me to do? Well, you know, that I may receive my sight. And he told him, your faith has made you whole, your faith. You know, in other words, God's given you faith. He's given you a measure of faith. It says that in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, that God has given to every person the measure of faith. And uh, faith, again, rises in your heart. It's... Uh, Faith is something that is measurable. You know, it's, it's quantifiable. Um, and so it's, it's measurable. And, uh, you know, so the Bible talks about little faith, no faith, great faith. You know, the woman with, uh, the, whose daughter needed to be made whole. Okay, I'm running out of time here. But the, the woman whose uh, daughter was grievously vexed with the devil, you know, um, she told Jesus, look, even the, even, because she wasn't even a Jew, and she said, look, even the, the dogs around the master's table, even the dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. And he said, woman, great is your faith. Be it done unto you as you believe. You know, be it whatever you want. So, um, so you have, um, you have here where, again, faith is, is quantifiable. God wants us to have faith. He wants us to lay up the word of God concerning his word, concerning his promises in our spirits, in our hearts, so that we can move mountains, so that nothing is impossible for us. Nothing. 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 He has given you authority. He has given you dominion. He's given you power. You know, it goes all the way back uh, to Adam, you know, where the Lord said to Adam and and. Genesis 1, 28, you know, where it says he created him in, in the image of God. He blessed him. And he said, you know, uh, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. Um, it's, it says replenish the earth and subdue the earth. Replenish and, and subdue the earth. I thought about that word replenish. You know what the earth needs right now? Replenished. We have authority and power to replenish, you know, and just refresh and revitalize and and resupply you know the earth hallelujah with the blessing of the lord that's on the righteous <laughs> you know the, you know there are people's lives that need replenished you know refreshed and blessed resupplied hallelujah 
you know, where you've got all that you need. You know, again, God, uh, in his grace, in his kingdom, give us, gives us all that we need and all that pertains, you know, to life and godliness. Hallelujah. He's, he's withholding nothing. God wants you to walk in his blessing in this hour and this time. Just like the Israelites did through thick and thin, through troubling times, difficult times. It didn't matter. The Lord looked after them through famine, through economic crisis, everything. The Lord blessed them. Hallelujah. And it's exactly the same with us. Praise the Lord. So, again, uh, we'll wrap it up here because, you know, we can continue on with this later. But the Bible says you, you've got to take the word. You've got to live the word. You, you've got to lay it up in your heart. You've got to let it be sown in, deep into the good ground. Amen? And you bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. And even the prayer promises, there's so many prayer promises. Jesus said, look, if you just go to the Father and ask in my name, I'll do it for you. Anything you ask in my name, I'll do it for you. If two of you agree on earth as touching anything that they shall, shall ask, it shall be done for you. And my Father which is in heaven, he said, look, I'm not even going to ask on your behalf. He said, for the Father himself loves you. Amen. You go in Jesus' name, praise God, and the Father himself receives you. Amen. You can go boldly before the throne of grace. You can find grace, mercy, help, you know, in time of need. Hallelujah. God will answer your prayers. There's nothing that's impossible. Say nothing is impossible. Nothing. Is impossible. nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I know that we've dealt with, you know, basics here today. But I tell you, there are people who have to get back to basics. And, and I'll say this in close. If you don't accept what I'm saying this morning, if you throw it aside well you know that's just brian <laughs> brian he's strange okay that's just brian <laughs> it's not me it's the word of god it's the word of god and uh, there are people that th the bible even talks about the apostle paul talked about people that departed from the faith they departed because they counted something as having higher authority and and, and gave it more prominence in their lives than the word of God. They made light of the word. They pushed the word aside and they listened to the word of man. Yeah. Or they listened to the word of tradition. Or they listened, you know, to somebody else. No, you don't do that. You don't do that with God's word. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not. Yeah. Yes. It will not pass away. And we will literally stand before God and give account as to what we did with the word. The word of God. That, that's the measure that's the standard. You know, did we bear fruit with it? Did we lay it up? Did we make light of it and push it away? No. Hallelujah. So, amen. How many of you are good ground? <laughs> You're good ground this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible to you. Say, say to your neighbor, nothing is impossible to you. <laughs> nothing is impossible to you. <laughs> amen. Miracles, guys. Miracles. Hallelujah. Here's a word. I, just, I really just have to say this. I felt really convicted this morning when Pastor Brian said, uh, you know, would we like another week of prayer? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I, I do feel really convicted. We should all have been shouting, yes, Pastor, go ahead with it. We need to pray. And I know it's, awkward. it's hard at this time with the, the pandemic and all. But listen, we're not going to get out of it unless we pray. We're not going to get anything unless we really pray. And I'm not saying you are not praying. But I think when the pastor of a church asks yes. for people to come, do they want to come to pray? My goodness, we, we didn't even say yes. We should have been shouting, yes, pastor, go ahead. <laughs> because I'll tell you, I was listening during the week to this man. Rick, you come. Rick, it's not Rick Renner, it's some other Rick. <laughs> but I was, I was listening to him, and he really, really convicted me because he said he had a, he had met with, he had spoke to the Lord, had spoke to him face to face, you know, personally. It, and the, he said to the Lord, well, Lord, why is all this happening? And why are you not answering, you know, why is it you're not fixing it quicker? Or, you know, he was asking questions about the world and what was happening. And the Lord said to him, because the people haven't did what it says on Second Chronicles 
7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways, that really convicts me when I hear that, that his people need to turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their life. Oh, it's, it's, it's are we complying with the word, okay? So are, are we complying with the word? And uh, I'll just say, uh, we got a great breakthrough, I believe, on Thursday. Yeah, one, one thing for Tony here. Sorry, one more thing, one more. <laughs> Yeah, we did get breakthrough on Thursday. Something happened in the spirit here, I'm telling you. Even government uh, acknowledging they don't have power to shut churches was part of something being broken. And I'll tell you what, it's going to evaporate. It's going to evaporate after this. Amen. I'll say this quickly. I was just meditating in First Kings on Elijah. And um, I think this is to basically, I'm going to speak into the camera, more mature believers and leaders and people in position and people who are already have moving, moving in their callings and their gifts. And I just was meditating, how could Elijah, after you know, calling down fire, after going up the mountain, seeing the rain, believing then go, you know, just running that fast, how could he at one sentence from a woman go into hiding? And you know what? We can all suffer from fear. We can all hear negative things and we can't judge people. But do you know what? God comes in that still voice. And if there's people out there, and I don't want to judge people or shout at people, but I know God is speaking to you in that still, quiet voice. And he's saying, do you know, why are you here? Why are you hiding? Because you see, Elijah had kings to anoint. He had people to go and anoint, and he had to disciple Elisha as well. He had him to rise up. So you have people to anoint. You have people to teach. You have people to lay hands on. You have people to send out. You have people that God has put in your way that you have to impart into on your journey in the Lord. So I just say, listen to that still, quiet voice and take your place in the church. Amen. Amen. Take your place. <laughs> God bless you. If anyone needs prayer, hallelujah, we're here. Amen. And uh, there's tea and coffee in the back. Glory to Jesus. Know that you have the victory, guys. Yeah, we turned a corner this week. We did. And uh, praise God. Um, I'll send out a text on the prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, probably a bit later now. Uh, it might be 7 to 8. Praise God, but uh, amen. The willing, the willing, you come along. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Amen. <laughs>